Hello everybody and welcome. Now last time we set up our template for our GA drawing. So today we're going to continue on with setting up our drawing itself. The first thing we want to do is decide what this is going to be. So I'm going to start off with saying I want a 3D view. Let's just get rid of that, rid of that, and 3D dash one. You'd most likely want to start at something like triple zero one or double zero one. And that's just so that you have always your drawings perfectly ordered when you print them. If you print it as simply just one and two, once you hit 10, your computer automatically organizes it as one, 10, two, which is suboptimal. If you look at our drawing, you'll see that we've got a couple of issues. I'm going to move this over to an A3, which is my preferred size for doing GAs. In here, I've got presets on different sizes again, but I don't want to use any of those. What I do want to do is make sure that I've got the Forge GA selected, and I'm going to say underscore layout. So not only have I selected the correct size and the correct layout, I'm saving this as board layout. And I'll be doing this for just about everything. Even if I do like the way it looks, I'll just usually save it under my own name. And that's just to make sure that I can consistently load that up. Dimensions, both these two. We can do a grid line dimensioning on or off. In this case, it is 3D, so they'll be off. Same with the overall dimensions. And these, nothing in here that I want to do. Over here, there's really nothing at all that I want to change. Next, part marks. Now, while I do appreciate the standardized part mark, I'm going to leave visibility to none. Go to secondary part and make sure there's absolutely nothing in there. And that'll just allow me to more easily add marks and keep from marking every single part. So we keep it to just the main part. Up here, we're going to type in our Ford GA mark, save this. We're going to grab our assemblies, all of this stuff. We're going to change the text size to 2 and the type to narrow. Modify. Now, you'll see this mark automatically changes. And that's mainly because this mark has been put in using the use view properties. Now, if I put it in using the applied properties, then whatever properties I'd have set in this menu over here, would be what is used, but since it's using view properties, it draws it from here. Now, you'll see that you do not have access to this port GA mark in here, and that's because the direct editing mark is different from the GA properties mark, and this is yet again different from the view properties mark. So if you open up the view properties by double clicking on that views line and heading over to the mark, you'll see that there's nothing in here either. So do remember that this setting has to be reset in multiple locations. And unfortunately, this is true for a large majority of the settings. If we head over to print, head over to line properties, have a quick look over here. The dark green is a three. And I think actually the dark green is fine for a part mark. Maybe we would like it to be a little bit lighter, something like the yellow or the orange could work, or maybe even make this black. That is completely up to you. I do like the assembly mark first, which is great. Section size is not always important, but having that in can be quite useful. Parts out of view plane is visible, merges off. You've got a couple of other settings that are quite useful that you can play with. But for now, I think this fairly standard part mark is what we'll use. And I can close that. Next, I will do the same for bolt marks. Have a look at that. It's a fairly long mark. And that mostly comes from the size, or well, the way the size is written. Let's remove those two, modify, and have a look at it again. Two bolts at M16 size. This is an 8.8 .8 bolt, and the bolt is 3.5 long. Well, for now, that'll be good enough. And let's change this to 2 mil, as well as aerial narrow. Modify this, goes a bit smaller, excellent. And then up here, let's call this GA mark and save. And I think that is just about everything that I'd like for it to be. So I'm going to say OK, close that, and it is saved. I'm also going to go through all of these, make sure that they are what I want. But for now, let's head on over to the grid lines. First things first, let's save this as 
GA grid and we're going to change the color to be brown. Excellent. Now, the main reason for this is because this color of brown is exact same thickness as red. The main difference between the two is that it is not red, and that'll become relevant a little bit later. The text size, as I'm using green for the rest, I'll be using green for this as well. Let's move this down to two and make it aerial narrow as well, always keeping this consistent. And we're going to save this. Change these to the front so that they are out of the way. And I'm going to call this 3D. With most views, I do want my grids labels at the top and at the left. With the 3D, this does not work as they will always end up being inside of your model. Next, we are going to be heading over to part and this is going to affect how they display. Now, because this is a 3D, I'd like to give this a bit of a softer appearance. We'll go to Special on Fill. Special is the color that prints very, very lightly. And that gives it something like this. This looks terrible on the black background. But if you press B, go into your printer preview, you'll see that this actually looks quite good once printed. So that is the preference that we'll use. And we are going to name this Port GA Part Solid and save that. We don't want hidden lines, we don't want reference lines, and we might not even want this as a yellow, maybe a nice green. What does that look like? It does look a little bit better, and it's a lot easier on the eyes than the yellow with the, the white. So I think I'll actually keep this as my color preference for now. Hidden lines are currently turned off. We can easily go and turn them on, and it might be quite good for smaller items, but I think for a 3D, I prefer them to be off. I don't need any center lines. I don't need anything else, I think. Let's close that up. For now, we're not going to bother with any of this other stuff. That's it from me. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. And I'll catch you all next time.